Here we are again with another episode of Cracked. Now what are we going to do today? Well, let's see what Nipper's got for us. To the record cabinet. And, uh, oh, have you been sitting on the records, Nipper? Yes, I have been. Just been keeping them straight for you. Oh, well that's nice of you, Nipper. Alright, let's see what we got today. <laughs> oh, this one's going to be fun. Oh, that doesn't look good. All right, let's see what we got here. Now this, I was originally going to buy, because it had already been patched once. But as you can see, patch didn't hold, and it was being sold for $2. Um, and I actually got it for free, because uh, the, the patch had broken. So, one moment. So what we have here today is a copy of Southern 134, and I've got the pieces, <laughs> I've got the pieces, but what the record is, is a copy of Harry Dial and his Blusicians, I like what I like, like I like it. Unfortunately, this copy is broken in half. Now, the reason I had interest in this particular record uh, was because uh, Harry Dial um, was, I guess, a longtime musician at the point this came out. I think this came out in the late 40s, early 50s. Um, but, uh, you know, as you might know, I am a Vocalion 1000 collector. And uh, there are a number of discs in the Vocalion 1000 series by Harry Dial and his Blusicians. One of those being, I like what I like, like I like it. And uh, I couldn't find any sort of um, recording of this online. So I asked my friend Scott, who owns Vintage Music in South Minneapolis, um, you got a copy of this? And he said, oh yeah, I got a copy of that. And it's it's a different version. It's a later version, maybe. I don't know. We'll find out. Maybe it's maybe it's later. Maybe it's maybe it's the same recording. Maybe it's a very similar style. Maybe he updated it later. But um, I can't play it because it's broken in half. I mean, it's broken in half. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, a little bit more of a challenge here this time. Alright, I'm not sure how this is going to uh, play up here, but I just turned my macrograph on, so maybe it'll focus a little better up close. But uh, let's see what we got to work with here. So we've got a mostly straight, somewhat jagged edge crack here. Uh, or, well, that's not just an edge crack, that's a crack. Uh, it goes all the way through the label and out the other side. And looking at it, I'm not seeing really any flakes on this side where there's a missing material. Oh, there's some missing material there maybe. No, 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 that's the glue from the old patch. And Oh, there's a little bit of a chip right there. But that's okay. And then we got a little glue on the end. And it's actually interesting to notice that we've got little bits of label that stick out on that side. And then if we flip it over, yet again, let's get the light right. Not really seeing any missing material. Oh, it might be a little bit right there. And then we've got the edge overhang and whatnot. So I think this will actually be uh, pretty good for fixing it up. All right. So yet again, we've got our useful paper towels here, and we've got our record that's going to fit together, and we've got. Um, our friend Mr. Superglue and for this particular episode I'm actually going to get one more little tool that I think is going to be kind of useful and that tool is Mr. Toothpick which I'll be using to spread the glue along the groove. Now this is actually a little easier to fix than some of the other records that we've had to deal with with cracks. I'm going to try my hardest to get the glue just on that surface because there actually is an appreciable surface there and then spread it out so we don't have a bunch oozing out onto the surface of the record and into the grooves. So let's see what we can do here. So I'm going to start with the label. Oop.
I'm just spreading a very minimal amount. Try not to get it in the hole, because then the hole won't be the right shape. You have to work relatively quickly because this stuff dries and sets pretty quick. But I'm actually just dotting this line here. Alright. Now if you guys want to see that, uh, I don't know if you can see, but there's there's dots of glue. Oh, there you go. There's dots of glue all along the record, but not on the whole surface. So we then join it together very carefully it's got to be just right One thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand, seven, one thousand, eight, one thousand, one thousand, ten, one thousand, eleven, one thousand, twelve, one thousand, thirteen. thousand, And I'm gonna let it dry for about a minute before I let go. And it's just a little bit of a bump there. And on the side. But Unlike some of the other times when I've gone ahead and glued these things and it's been kind of sloppy, this one's actually pretty neat and I don't really see any glue seeping out from the, uh, the edges here, which is good because it means the only surface noise will be from the record itself and not from um, glue sticking into the grooves. Alright, so I'm going to let that go now. And if I run this over the edge just to see, now oh, there's a bit of a groove right there. So, so we're gonna let that dry for a while and set, and then um, may maybe play test it, or I might try to add a little bit of filler into the groove uh, before we go ahead and play test it. Okay, well, it's been drying and sitting for about an hour. I have not moved it. Looks like it was a little bit stuck to the paper towel. Well, let's see what happens when I try to lift it up. Oh. Alright, well, it's holding itself together. Maybe for the first time since I've owned this record, which is not really that long, in spite of the fact that there's a big old gash going through it, uh, we can go ahead and try to put this one on the turntable, see what happens. Well, it's not perfect, but it did play, and uh, you know there was clicking, two clicks per every revolution, because there's two cracks in the record, <laughs> it goes all the way through, but it did play all the way through, not a single skip, and um, that's actually uh, pretty awesome, because heck, that record was broken in half, no way that would have gotten played. So... That being a relative success, at some point I might try to patch the crack a little more and fill in the groove somehow, but still haven't quite got that technique down, and, and uh, that record's a little too interesting to experiment on further until I've, I've got that technique down. Um, I will say uh, I definitely like the um, 20s Vocalion version over the whatever 40s version on Southern. I think 
the other um, label that, that was part of was King, either King or Queen Records. Queen Records, um, same company, just different name. Um, it was the one year they made the Queen label before they just put everything on King. So uh, yeah, yeah, still a fun tune, but not as good as the original. So still looking out for a copy of the original. If I ever find one, I probably won't be able to afford it unless it's cracked in half. So if anybody out there has a copy cracked in half and they're willing to uh, donate it or um, you know they'll they'll take a few dollars for it, uh, first of all we'll put it up on YouTube, I will glue it back together and uh, we'll make some music out of it. I'd greatly appreciate it. But until next time, and we'll see what we have in store for next time uh, that might be even more uh, of a challenge or more interesting than this one. Um, but uh, that's it for Cracked today. Uh, we'll hope you all have a good week, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.